The original Beyblade anime, in which spanned across three seasons, was adapted from the relatively successful manga which shares the same name. The anime's first season was produced by Madhouse, an animation studio who went on to create arguably one of the greatest anime adaptations of all time in Hunter x Hunter. In this video I will provide a high level overview of the first season of Beyblade. Before we get into the characters and the story, let's briefly cover over what Beyblades are and the rules of the game. Beyblades are essentially spinning tops, with additional components which make them far more robust. In order for a Beyblade to spin, a launcher and a rip cord is needed. The launcher is what houses the blade, and the rip cord is what inserts into the launcher, in which when pulled, enables the rotation mechanism within the launcher to provide spin to the blade upon release. The fundamental rule of the game is simple, whomever knocks their opponent's Beyblade out of the dish, or causes their opponent's blade to stop spinning, is helmed the winner of the battle. Players who partake in the game are referred to as Beybladers. The franchise also introduces Bit Beasts that are spirits which take the form of animals, monsters and beasts alike. Bit Beasts are able to inhabit Beyblades. In the dub it is intimated that Bit Beasts are trapped within a Beyblade, however this is incorrect as the Bit Beasts represent the fighting spirit of their chosen blader and yes I mean exactly that when I say their chosen blader as a Bit Beast would voluntarily enter a blade of the blader it has chosen to offer its power to. These beasts can greatly influence the tide of a battle. The bond between the blader and their bit beast is an important element too, as a strong bond is needed between them in order to tap into the bit beast's potential. Unlike commonly found in many other franchises, where a beast of sorts is under the command of a given character and is able to transform into a more powerful version of itself, a bit beast for the most part cannot do this. They all have their given attributes, such as Dragoon, which wields the power of wind, whilst there's Dranza, which wields the power of fire. By mechanically upgrading the Beyblade itself as well as its launcher, not only does the blade become more powerful, but so too does the Bit Beast, allowing it to evolve its moveset. This essentially means as the Beyblade itself becomes more physically capable, so too does the Bit Beast. Now let's go over some of the main characters. This is Tyson. Tyson loves to bay battle and aims to be the number one blader in the world. He has mostly been raised by his grandfather as his mother passed away some time ago and Tyson's father, an archaeologist, spends most of his time away from home travelling the world. Tyson began to Beyblade at a young age. He's very quick to think on his feet and is an excellent strategist all round. These attributes of his make him very confident in battle, which sometimes can lead him to underestimate his opponents. He also has a comedic side to his personality, and so often likes to crack jokes in order to lighten the mood. But be not mistaken, not all is laughing jokes to him, as when Tyson puts his mind to something, he will absolutely give it his all. This drive and determination of his propels him to much greater heights within the Beyblading world. Tyson's bit beast is Dragoon. This is Kenny. Kenny loves the art form that is Bay Battles. Whilst not an active blader himself, he is a student of the game. Kenny spends his time studiously watching and analysing Bay Battles, going on to dissect tactics employed by the bladers during battle which over time has helped him hone his abilities in becoming a key strategist for the main cast, especially coming in handy when they find themselves up against a powerful foe or team. Kenny has a laptop he uses to help with his research, whether that's analysing footage of bay battles from the past, or on the fly whilst witnessing live battles, in which the laptop provides him key insights, such as the composition of a competing blader's blade, or in providing analysis of their bit beast should they have one. I should also mention that his laptop talks too. And no, it's not AI controlling it. You see, his laptop is a little more unique than that. Kenny's laptop is inhabited by his bit beast by the name of Dizara, whom he refers to as Dizzy for short. Kenny also coins himself the title of Chief, a deserving title if you ask me, as he plays an integral role in helping the other main characters overcome difficult challenges they must face off with. Meet Ray. Ray is generally one of the more calmer Zen characters, however he also carries with him a deep sense of competitiveness and drive similar to that of Tyson. Ray wears a red bandana across his forehead, in which displays the yin and yang symbol embedded upon it, which is a perfect representation that encapsulates the many facets that make up his personality. Ray is often the voice of reason during disputes, maintaining his composure as well as remaining polite even in heated situations. But he can also be a hothead ready to commence battle if he feels those he cares for are in danger or being wrongfully disrespected. He comes from a small tight-knit village and his passion for Beyblading eventually led him to leave in order to become the best blader he can be. 
His goal is to become a powerful and successful blader, in which he intends to share the experiences with other bladers in his village. Ray's bit beast is Trigger. This is Max. Max is the youngest in the group. His mother Judy is a successful Beyblading researcher and also coaches a powerful team of bladers known as the PBP All-Stars. His father, Taro, is a kind-hearted man who runs a small bay hobby shop in which kids can visit to bay battle using the store's built-in bay dish, as well as bring their blades in for Taro to either repair or fit upgrades to. Max displays a clear internal drive to succeed in whatever he is doing, a trait he clearly got from his mother, whilst he also is kind and generous just as his father. Max likes to see the good in people, and due to his openness he is able to click with most people upon first meeting. He specialises in a defensive playstyle and his bit beast is called Drasil. And finally we have Kai. Kai is an extremely capable and skillful blader in his own right. He is obsessed with being the most powerful blader in the world. Kai is not the most social or talkative of people, the complete opposite of Max in some sense, which can cause him to clash with the rest of his peers. He enjoys solitude and so remains distant from the rest of the kids for the most part. Kai's bit beast is Dronza. If you happen to be enjoying this video so far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel as it will do wonders in helping us grow this small community of anime fans we have here at this channel. Okay, so on to the story. We begin the series meeting Tyson, who is in the middle of Kendall training with his grandpa. His grams highlights how his birthday is coming up soon and how he is preparing him to be ready to be handed over the family sword which contains the seal of Dragoon, who has washed over the family for generations. Tyson manages to distract his grandpa, enabling him to run away from training. He rushes out from their home with his Beyblade in hand, as he has a bay battle planned between he and one of the locals by the name of Andrew. Tyson is stopped by another blader by the name of Billy, who goes on to remind Tyson that he owes him a battle. Billy is easily defeated, leaving him dumbfounded. Tyson clarifies that a key to winning a bay battle is not strength alone, but also strategy. Tyson makes his way to the rendezvous point, a rooftop where the bay battle between he and Andrew is due to take place. Andrew is unfortunately otherwise occupied by a seemingly delinquent blader by the name of Carlos, who had just defeated him in battle. You see, Carlos travels around the town challenging other bladers to a one-on-one -on -one battle, in which the conditions he sets is that the loser must hand over their bay blade to the winner. It is made clear from onset that Carlos is not to be taken lightly as he carries around with him a rucksack filled with the Beyblades he has won by being victorious over multiple battles. Bison is having none of it and goes on to reprimand Carlos, challenging him to a bay battle in which should Tyson win, Carlos must return all the Beyblades he has taken. Tyson is interrupted by none other than Kenny, who seems to be aware of who Tyson is given his popularity amongst the local town youth. Yet Tyson is oblivious as to who Kenny is, given this is the first time they met. Carlos and Tyson agree a time and place where their battle is to take place. Kenny analyzes the footage of the battle that Andrew and Carlos just had, and Tyson deduces that the weight differential between the two blades was what turned the tide of the battle in Carlos's favor, given his Beyblade is much bulkier than Andrew's. Dizzy concurs this and further goes on to add how Carlos's blade has a much heavier metal alloy which is where the bulk of his additional weight is coming from. Kenny does the math and concludes that Tyson would need to increase his Beyblade's speed by 4x in order to nullify the weight advantage Carlos's blade has over his. Now back home, Tyson is racking his brain on ways as to how he can increase his blade speed. His first idea is to double the length of the ripcord which does prove effective as it in fact doubles the speed of his blade. However, he still needs to increase the speed two more times over. During a nap, Tyson has a vision of Dragoon which beams forward towards him from the sky, which immediately wakes him up. He spends the bulk of the night practicing a move he is looking to implore in his battle with Carlos. The following morning, Benny, Andrew, Carlos and a couple of other town folk wait on Tyson to arrive. He does in fact make it and the battle is ready to commence. Much to Kenny's shock, instead of launching his Beyblade from a stationary position as is the norm, Tyson instead runs towards the bay dish and then launches his blade. Dizzy confirms that this run start launch provided Tyson's blade with additional spin. Coupled with a longer ripcord, his blade has now achieved the 4x increase in speed he needed. 
Bison is able to swiftly defeat Carlos, who is in shock having had been defeated. Carlos has no intention of returning the Beyblades and looks to make a run for it. Before Tyson is able to stop him, everybody stops in their tracks as there is a figure standing above them. This figure is none other than Kai. Kai briefly expresses his disappointment in Carlos, who he sighs has proven himself unworthy, giving him a backhanded slap in the process. Naturally, this does not sit well with Tyson, who demands a battle with Kai. Kai introduces himself as the leader of the Blade Sharks, and Kenny goes on to warn Tyson against picking a fight with one of the Blade Shark members, as they are an undefeated team. Tyson does not heed Kenny's warning, and before the battle begins, Kai shows off his Beyblade, which holds the bit beast Dronza. Their battle begins, and Tyson implores the same start goal launch, but his Beyblade is absolutely decimated by Kai's Dronza. Having been defeated and also in complete shock, Tyson drops to his knees, surrounded by broken pieces of his now shattered blade. Tyson is down but not out for the count as he goes straight back into training in order to become strong enough to defeat Kai. During his training, the family sword flashes a beam of light, and so Tyson takes the time out to ask Dragoon what's up with it. Much to his surprise, the emblem of Dragoon blinks. Before he is able to process what he had just witnessed, Kenny and Andrew walk in. Andrew gives Tyson a bit of backstory of how the Blade Sharks came to be, going on to explain how Kai is their leader and their goal is to find the most powerful Beyblade which contains the ultimate bit beast. Tyson concludes that all they have to do is build the most powerful blade themselves, but Andrew argues that this will not work without a bit beast, a piece of advice which Tyson completely dismisses. They discuss how to repair Tyson's blade and Kenny explains how his laptop is inhabited by his bit beast Dizzy, who speaks directly from the laptop itself. Dizzy goes over the strategy to defeat Kai. Back at the Blade Shark's hideout, Kai punishes Carlos by having the other members destroy his blade. Due to how Carlos damaged the group's reputation having lost his battle against Tyson, the trio managed to rebuild Tyson's blade but it's still not powerful enough to take on Kai. Tyson is informed that the Blade Sharks have kidnapped Kenny. Before leaving to save Kenny, Tyson asks Dragoon for help, whom to his shark responds by presenting itself before him, entering into his Beyblade. Now having made it to the Blade Sharks hideout, Tyson demands to battle their leader Kai, who presents himself and accepts the challenge. The battle plays out similar to the last, but before Dronze is able to land the finishing blow, Tyson's blade flashes and begins to spin around the dish creating a small tornado. Both blades clash and emit a light in which the bit beasts Dragoon and Dronza emerge from them, going on to clash with one another, leading to the battle ending in a draw. Kai explains how both his and Tyson's Beyblades are not ordinary blades, as they are powered by bit beasts, which endow extraordinary powers to their Beyblades. Tyson, whilst training, has his Beyblade stolen by a small pop. The owner gives him his Beyblade back, and Tyson bumps into Max, who is new to town. Their introductions are cut short, as the same pop from earlier is drowning, having fell into the river. Tyson lets his Beyblade rip into the water in an attempt to push a log which is in the river over to the dog. He is unsuccessful in budging the log, and so Max intervenes doing the exact same, only he is successful in moving the log. The pop is saved and Max explains the reason Tyson's Beyblade could not budge the log was that he miscalculated the angle in which he needed to hit it at. Max offers to take Kenny and Tyson to a hobbyist shop that is owned by his father, Taro, in order to get Tyson's Beyblade checked out given that it got drenched in the water. The shop has a bay dish installed within it, and Tyson wants Max to help him train. This makes Kenny feel insecure, worrying that Max will take away his role in coaching Tyson. But Kenny is reassured by none other than Tyson himself that there's nothing for him to worry about on that front. Tyson loses his practice battle with Max, who highlights to him instead of putting all his eggs in one basket, by focusing so much on attacking, he should diversify his tactics as his current offensive focused playstyle renders Dragoon vulnerable defensively. Mr. Dickinson, the chairman of the Beyblade Battle Association, known as the BBA for short, arrives at the store. The BBA is an organization which coaches and promotes the world's top Beyblading teams. Taro highlights how Mr. Dickinson used to be a regular customer of his at his previous shop, but is also a close friend of the family too. Mr. Dickinson's visit is to inform Taro of an event the BBA are going to be hosting soon. It's a qualifier tournament in which we'll bring bladers across the country to participate, whereby only one will be crowned the victor. Max and Kenny are excited for the tournament and so too is Tyson. 
but his reasons are a little bit different as he is certain Kai will enter the tournament which leads him to also want to enter the tournament in order to avenge his loss to Kai. Mr Dickinson confirms that Kai has already entered and is also the returning champion. Back at the Blade Sharks hideout, Kai battles and defeats three of the members simultaneously. The qualifier rounds for the tournament begins, Kenny has also entered himself into the tournament. Max wins his battle but Kenny must face Kai, who has a major advantage given that Kenny's bit beast resides in his laptop and not his Beyblade. Kenny is inevitably defeated by Kai. Tyson tries to confront Kai but Kenny restrains him as he goes on to explain an altercation between the two would lead to Tyson's disqualification. Tyson must participate in a Royal Rumble style elimination battle versus multiple opponents. All his opponents are made up of just members of the Blade Sharks including Carlos. The Blade Sharks aim to take Tyson out together. With some quick thinking, Tyson is able to outmaneuver and escape their collective attacks. You see, Carlos is still salty for what his teammates had done to his Beyblade and so turns on them, going on to give them a taste of their own medicine by destroying their Beyblades too. Now Tyson must battle Carlos in a one-on-one -on -one battle, whereby the winner will be able to progress to the next stages of the tournament. The battle between the two commences and Tyson is able to implore a Mirage style technique, enabling him to take out Carlos's Beyblade from behind. Kenny breaks down the technical aspect and how Tyson was able to achieve this vanishing effect. on the simple physics theory that a body increasing in motion will eventually become unseen to the naked eye. In other words, Tyson has intensified the spin using an accelerated wrist release, I think. Tyson goes on to show great sportsmanship and goes over to hand Carlos's blade back to him, whilst also giving Carlos his props which clearly moves him as well as impresses Mr Dickinson. Tyson must next face the undefeated Ray. But before all else, Max must take on Kai in a 1v1 battle, but the rules are unique. In this battle, each player must have their Beyblade climb a secondary bay dish installed within the primary dish that they are to battle in. Each player must have their blade stay put in the secondary dish for up to 10 seconds in order to secure a win. The battle is a best out of 3, with the blader who is able to secure 2 wins being coined the winner. Max now wielding a mechanically upgraded Beyblade is able to easily have it traverse up to the secondary dish and so the 10 second countdown begins. But Kai wasn't gonna just sit around and let him take the dub. Kai goes on to command Dronza to attack which wipes Max's blade out of the dish entirely. Having had Tyson spare him on, Max comes up with a new strategy to keep him in this fight in which he reverse launches his Beyblade allowing it to immediately drop right into the secondary tower dish. Kai commands Dronza to use the same attack but this time Max's Beyblade remains in the dish having absorbed Dronza's attack as it was spinning in reverse motion to Kai's blade. Even Kai is impressed but this doesn't last long as he instructs Dronza to launch another attack but this plays right into Max's plan as his blade begins to spin again in reverse gears which results in Dronza's own attack repelling back to itself securing Max his first win. The amount of energy it had absorbed from Kai's blade proved to be too much for Max's, which results in the chip which would house a bit beast to crack. Now with his Beyblade compromised, Max is unsure if he will be able to continue the battle. Max is surprised to find that the pendant he is wearing given to him by his grandma contains the bit beast Drasil within it. Max goes on to insert the bit beast chip onto his blade and resumes battle. Unfortunately, even with the power of Drasil, Max is unable to overcome Kai and Dranza, and so Kai is able to progress onto the next stages of the tournament. Kenny stays up late during the night before Tyson's match in order to come up with some improvement mods for Dragoon, which will allow it to withstand the attack power of Ray's Beyblade and his Bit Beast Drigger. Next is Tyson versus Ray, who has also joined the tournament. The match again is a 1v1, but the rules are the same as a regular Bay battle. Ray proves too much for Tyson, winning the first round with ease. The next round cannot begin as Ray has damaged Tyson's blade to a point in which he is unable to continue to battle. Tyson is advised he needs to repair Dragoon as soon as possible or else will be forced to forfeit the match. Kenny comes in clutch having some spare parts ready on deck. Kenny installs a new upgraded attack ring and a special defense ring to Tyson's blade which should allow it to withstand Drigger's special move. 
The second round now commences and it soon turns into a head to head battle between both of their bit beasts, with Dragoon coming out victorious. Rey, although sad he lost, gains a newfound respect for Titan and his abilities. Rey forfeits the final round, as to him the battle was definitively settled to a close when he and Drigger were unable to overcome Dragoon's sheer power and Tyson's will to win. Rey and Tyson shake hands, as Tyson must now prepare to take on Kai in the finals. The battle between Kai and Tyson commences, and from onset Tyson commands Dragoon to use its special attack, which immediately knocks Dronza out of the Vadish as well as sending Kai flying back from the sheer force. Kai is able to secure the win in the second round, knocking Dragoon out of the Vadish. Now onto the third and final round, the battle reaches much more epic proportions than all the matches we have seen before it, with the audience including Mr Dickinson, Taro, Max and Kenny all in awe at the spectacle of the battle. Dragoon is able to go toe to toe with Dronza and after clashing, both blades end up on the edge of the Vadish. But unfortunately for Kai, Dronza is unable to hold its balance against the edge and falls out of the Baydish, leading to Tyson winning the battle. Mr. Dickinson, along with Ray, approach the two and to everyone's surprise, he announces that Kai and Tyson will be part of a team, which includes Ray and Max, that the BBA are creating to represent Japan on the world stage in the World Beyblading Championship set to be hosted in Russia. Mr. Dickinson convinces Kai to join the team, selecting him as the leader of this new group to be a mentor and a coach to them all, which will also enable him to participate in taking on the strongest bladers in the world. Tyson names the team the Blade Breakers. We witness an old man approach Kai, who reinforces to Kai that he needs to remain focused on his task, in which he must continue to Beyblade in order to get him the bit power of the Beyblades he defeats, which Kai agrees to. The old man turns out to be Kai's grandfather Voltaire, who makes it clear that failure is not an option. The Blade Breakers are flown out to Hong Kong and during the flight, Kenny shows Tyson a new launcher that he has created for the team to use. Once they reach the hotel, they are surprised to see that Ray is serving their food. Ray clarifies that he is working as a waiter in his spare time for the extra cash. Mr. Dickinson debriefs the team that he wishes for them to participate in the Asia tournament, in which by winning will enable them to enter the world championships. The rule of the Asia tournament is simple in that each member of a given team must win their battle in order to progress past the preliminary stages. This does not sit well with Kai, who has zero faith that the rest of his team members will win their battles. Ray is being watched from afar by someone wearing traditional attire similar to his own. In an alley, the group hear a Beyblade spinning but struggle to locate it. That is until a wok is thrown their way and a spinning blade lands within it. The person watching Ray earlier is the blade's owner and goes on to challenge the group to a battle, refusing to let them leave. He uses a nunchuck as a launcher for his Beyblade, in which he has multiple of. Ray, who's unaware of who this person is, steps up to take on the challenge, but Tyson is adamant to battle him, and so does. Tyson initially struggles with the pace of the battle, with Ray having some harsh words for him in order to spur him on. Tyson calls upon Dragoon and is able to secure the win, knocking his opponent's Beyblade out of the makeshift Bay dish. Another blade is launched into the dish by an unknown party, knocking Tyson's blade in the direction of Ray who goes on to be saved by none other than Kai. The unknown party reveals himself and Ray recognizes them. They turn out to have a history with Ray. This blader's name is Kevin, who is a member of the White Tigers, a team whom Ray has a history with. The blader Tyson defeated earlier runs away and bumps into other members of the White Tigers, including their leader Lee. Tyson and Kevin battle with the rule set of the first to win two rounds out of three will be the winner of the match. Kevin releases his Bit Beast, which is able to knock Tyson's blade out of the dish. Kevin and Tyson have a rematch. Now knowing his opponent has a Bit Beast in the second round, Tyson wastes no time in calling out Dragoon, which knocks Kevin's Beyblade out of the dish. Their third battle is interrupted by Mariah and Gary, whom are members of the White Tigers we saw earlier. Ray also knows them both very well. It's made apparent they see Ray as a traitor, confirming him to have been a previous member of the White Tigers. Their leader also arrives and begins to insult Ray's new team members. As the White Tigers walk off, Kai realizing Lee is their leader, 
goes on to challenge him to a battle. Lee declines the offer, however Mariah steps up to take on the challenge but Kai declines. She still goes on to demonstrate her prowess by launching her Beyblade, showing off her skill and her blade's agility which does impress the group, including Kai. The White Tigers leave, with the Blade Breakers now knowing they may have to face this formidable team at some point in this tournament. The tournament begins, and if both rival teams defeat their opponents, they will be one step closer in facing one another. The rivalry between the two teams deepens, with both sides amped to take one another on. The Blade Breakers take on the Tall Boys, and each member of the team come out victorious, allowing the Blade Breakers to move on to the next stages of the tournament, and so too do the White Tigers. Kevin is still angry at Ray for having left the White Tigers, and so sneaks into the crew's residence, where they are sleeping. Kevin finds Kenny's laptop unattended and begins to copy the data off it, which includes all of Kenny's proposed improvements for Tyson's blade. Kenny walks in on Kevin, but it's too late by then, and is unsuccessful in stopping Kevin from running away with the copy of his data. Ray blocks Kevin from leaving, whilst also attempting to clarify the misunderstanding the White Tigers have around the nature of him leaving the team. Kevin's anger towards Ray prevents him from being receptive to what he is being told. Kenny, on the other hand, is waking up the rest of the team, who go on to watch the battle between Ray and Kevin. Drigger's presence has Kevin wanting to bail out the battle, which Ray declines, yet he hesitates to attack his old friend. This hesitation by Ray causes Drigger to leave, as their bond was bound by Ray's focus to win. Now powerless to defend himself, Kevin goes in for the kill, but Tyson steps in and defends Ray. Kenny asks for his data back, but Kevin sets the conditions that they must win the data back off him. He and Tyson battle, in which Tyson comes out victorious. Now having their data back, Kevin leaves. Kai expresses his disappointment in Ray for essentially throwing the battle, and adds there's nothing that can be done about it now. Mariah and Lee get a sense that something is not right, and both are clearly worried. Now having lost Trigger, Ray is left wondering what else could go wrong. No longer wielding a bit beast, Ray does not feel deserving to be a member of the Blade Breakers and so ventures into the mountains in order to track down Trigger. Instead, he bumps into Mariah. They reminisce over the fond memories they shared in the past and the fun times they had with the rest of the members of the White Tigers. She reminds Ray how he has always been a talented blader and won numerous battles long before he had his own bit beast. Ray starts to question whether to return to the White Tigers or to remain in the Blade Breakers. Tyson and Max locate Ray, whom expresses this to them. Tyson challenges Ray to a battle, whereby if he wins, Ray stays. But should Ray win, he is free to leave the team. Tyson uses the power of his Bit Beast, but Ray shows off his skills and is able to emerge victorious even without a Bit Beast, much to Tyson's surprise. Ray decides to stay on as a member of the Blade Breakers, the reasoning being that right now he feels they need him much more than the White Tigers do. Ray has Mariah's full blessing, but they are then interrupted by Lee, who begins to insult Ray, with both Tyson and Max stepping forward to protect their friend. Both members of the White Tigers leave. Having entered into the semi-final rounds of the tournament, everyone but Tyson who is sleeping are raring to go. The tournament resumes and this time we finally get to see the rest of the White Tigers in action. Each member uses their skill and bit beasts to secure the win, but Lee's battle was quite interesting, as he implores Ray's signature move, the Tiger Claw Attack, much to the Blade Breakers and Ray's surprise. Lee explains to them his history with Ray, in how they were best friends having both grown up together. Lee explains how his grandfather had handed down their own bit beast to Ray. He clarifies he was not mad at this decision that his grandfather had made, nor was he upset at Ray either, as he saw Ray as family. But after Ray left the White Tigers, Lee vowed he would train every day, ready for when the day arrives that he and Ray meet again, whereby he would claim Drigger as his. Tyson and Max win their respective battles, and next up is Ray. Ray's resolve in this battle leads to Drigger to return to his blade. Ray wins his battle, enabling the Blade Breakers to proceed to the next stage of the tournament. Tyson and Ray are both held up in a traffic jam, caused by the landslide up ahead. They decide to climb up the mountain, but Ray injures his ankle, and so Tyson must carry him on his back. Max is doing everything he can to stall his battle, in order to give them both time to make it to the venue as their turn to battle is right after him. Max wins his battle, but the pair are nowhere to be seen. With time running out, Kai steps in as a substitute. The match between Kai and his opponent is encapsulated perfectly by the announcer, who goes on to state, Get him, Dronzer! And Kai is the first 
Sorry to interrupt, AJ, but this one's over before it started. Kai then goes on to announce that they will be forfeiting the third match as the Blade Breakers have now just used up their one and only sub in Kai. Tyson and Ray looking worse for wear, make it just in the nick of time. Tyson steps up and defeats his opponent even faster than Kai did his. The Blade Breakers move on to the finals where they must face off against the White Tigers. Kenny arranges the order in which the team will battle and highlights how based on stats, the White Tigers are approximately 5 times stronger than the Blade Breakers are, with Lee also warning his team to stay on guard against the Blade Breakers as they have Ray. Max is up first and he must face Gary, whose Bit Beast is known for its stamina, whilst Max's Bit Beast Drasil is known for its defense. Neither Beyblade is known for their attack power, but they make up for this in their given attributes. This will be a battle of attrition, with the Beyblade holding out the longest taking the win. Kenny voices to Max how important it is for the team's momentum that he wins his match. Max only goes on to annoy Kenny with his lackadaisy attitude towards the battle. Kenny highlights how if Max loses, it will only take one more loss for the team to lose the match. But the rest of the members have full confidence that they will win as they have faith in the upgrades Kenny has made to their Beyblades as well as the strategy he has set in place for them to follow in their respective matches. The match begins and Kenny is panicking whilst Max is as calm as it goes. Ray reminds their chief that they need to have faith in their teammate. Max is able to defeat Gary in the first round, but his overconfidence comes back to bite him. As now facing a much more motivated Gary in the second round, Drasil is completely overpowered by Gary's pit beast. With the score now 1 to 1, the final round will be a tiebreaker. Dizzy deduces that Gary's pit beast gains more power the angrier he gets. The third round commences and Gary's rage leads to his bit beast absolutely decimating the Baydish, securing him the victory. The White Tigers now have the lead. Ray is up next and he must take on Mariah, but should he lose, the White Tigers will be coined the winners of the tournament. Kai is not happy with Ray facing off against Mariah, as he feels there is a clear conflict of interest here, given Ray and Mariah have history. But the rest of the team believe in Ray's commitment to the Blade Breakers, believing their teammate will pull out the win. They are both evenly matched, however Ray finds an opening but hesitates to take it, leading to him to miss his shot, which allows Mariah to knock his Beyblade out of the dish. The team is dumbfounded how Ray missed his shot and even the audience is not impressed with the battle so far. Kai's suspicions turn out to be correct. Mariah on the other hand is not having any of it and demands Ray fight her with his all, as he would any other opponent. Ray struggles to contend with his feelings, but with some more push from Mariah and a word from Kai, Ray snaps out of it, now having his focus back on the game. Realising that his bit beast is on the line here after all, he takes it on with his full might. Both their bit beasts clash, leaving both of their blades struggling to keep on spinning, with Mariah's blade being the first to give out, securing Ray the win. The final round commences and having his entire team as well as Mr Dickinson cheering him on, Ray is in good spirits. After a grueling battle, both of their blades struggle to keep spinning. Similar to the last round, the bay blade that can hold out the longest will determine the winner here. Unfortunately for Mariah, her blade stops spinning first, which means that Ray has won the second match. The White Tiger's leader is naturally disappointed and berates Mariah. Tyson must now face Lee, knowing full well that his teammate's Bit Beast is on the line and how his battle will determine its fate. Kenny gives Tyson a new launcher that he created. But the launcher offers little to no help as Lee is able to just one shot Tyson's blade out of the dish when the first round commences. Kai makes Tyson aware that Lee is heavily focused on Ray, which he can use to his advantage. Tyson utilizes the sand pit within the bay dish to his advantage, using Dragoon's special attack to create a sandstorm of sorts, which is able to overwhelm Lee's bay blade, securing Tyson the win in the second round. The next round will determine the winner of the tournament. Lee is furious and unleashes his Bit Beast's full power at Dragoon. With both Bit Beasts unleashing their special attack, a flash of light soon follows, with the battle ending in a draw. The MC announces there is a deadlock due to the draw and in order to determine a winner, a member of each team must face off in one more round. Ray wants to take on Lee, having Tyson's full blessing behind him. Lee does not hold back however and uses each member of the White Tiger's moves against Ray. Lee discloses how Ray was originally made the leader of the White Tigers with each member having the dream of becoming world champions together, but that dream was ruined after Ray left without explanation. Ray informs him that he left in order to become a better blader and expand his horizons. 
Ray goes on to defeat Lee, which means the Blade Breakers are the victors of the Asia tournament. Now setting their eyes on competing at the American tournament, Lee finally understands that Ray was only able to improve by leaving and gaining experience by travelling the country. Lee acknowledges Ray's strength and the misunderstanding between them is finally cleared up. Ray's goal was after all to acquire more experience and skills in order to eventually bring it back home to his old team for them to benefit as he shares the knowledge and experience he gained during his travels with them. Now back in his hometown, Tyson is made aware by the local kids that the Blade Breakers are the talk of the town and even on the front page of the newspapers. This all feeds into Tyson's ego which leads him to completely lose focus on the upcoming US tournament, much to Kenny's annoyance. Tyson, Kenny and Max help out a local kid whose bully had just destroyed his blade during their bay battle. With the trio's help, the kid is able to repair his bay blade and beat the bully in a rematch. On the other side of town, Voltaire gives Kai his next assignment in which he instructs him to find all the Beyblades at the US tournament which have bit beasts within them and bring their power to him. The Blade Breakers make it to the US and Max is surprised to see his mother Judy working at the BBA research facility in America. The Blade Breakers are put through numerous tests by Judy and her sister Emily, designed to highlight their weaknesses. They are able to easily defeat what is put in front of them. Well, that is until Judy's assistant Emily, who's an expert Beyblader, easily defeats Max. As mentioned earlier in this video, Judy is also the coach of the team called the PVP All Stars, whom Emily is also a member of. They disclose their actual goal was to get the Blade Breakers into the facility in order to collect data on them, which they now have and determine that the Blade Breakers stand no chance against their All Stars. Judy is ruthless, having pulled such a dirty trick on none other than the team her son is a member of. The Blade Breakers sneak into and explore the facility in order to gain intel on Emily's team, whilst Max is lost in thought as to why he was never asked by Judy to join the All Stars. As they sneak around the facility, there are laser sensors everywhere which they must avoid. Max sees his mom in the distance and he excitedly rushes towards her with complete disregard of the numerous sensors around. He goes on to trigger one of them and a glass door drops down from the ceiling in which if Kai hadn't saved him would have most certainly crushed Max. The team is approached by two blokes. Their names are Steve and Eddie, who are also members of the All Stars. They go on to tease Max in how he was easily defeated by Emily. They disclose how their bit beasts are extremely powerful, having been created at the lab in the research facility. Ray challenges Steve to a battle, initially being able to hold his own, but that is until Steve unleashes his artificial bit beast called Trihorn, which is able to stockpile the energy gained from Drigger's attack, shortly thereafter rebounding that energy onto his opponent's Beyblade during its assault, resulting in Ray's defeat. To add further salt to the wound, Steve's Beyblade, which is still spinning by the way, easily shatters the glass door which Dragoon was unable to make a dent against earlier. Kai is unfazed by their strength and offers encouraging words to his team. Regardless of the result, they too now have gained crucial intel on their opponents. Mr. Dickinson sends the kids to a remote mountainous location in order to hone their skills. They meet a boy there by the name of Antonio, who wants to battle, which Tyson happily takes him upon. It turns out Antonio is not a good blade at all. He explains his passion for the sport and in training others on how to Beyblade, going on to state that when Mr. Dickinson heard of his story, he offered him a spot in the tournament, much to the Blade Breaker's amusement. Tyson wants to make the best of the situation and relax, whilst Antonio presents Ray and Kenny with a key which Mr. Dickinson left for them both. The key is to an outhouse, which within it contains a letter written by Mr. Dickinson himself, which states that their equipment is almost ready and will arrive shortly. He also adds how Ray's bit beast must become more powerful. The note further adds how Kenny must find a way to rebuild and improve Ray's Beyblade. At a waterfall, the team begin their training sparring one another. Kai has some harsh truths to tell Antonio. As Kai wants his team members to improve, he asks Antonio if he wishes to be able to defeat Tyson, going on to train him whilst the knight is still young. The following morning, Antonio is able to defeat Tyson with the training he received. Tyson's Gramps, who is also present, reiterates something similar to what Kai had told Antonio the night before, which is that they must continue to work hard just as they did when they first started out in the sport, as they have become too complacent as of late. Ray launches his newly improved Beyblade which Kenny had worked on all night. Drigger as a result has become exponentially more powerful. 
With training now over, they make their way to the location of where the tournament is to be held, but prior to it commencing, a charity Beyblading event is underway in which Max participates in. The All-Stars are also present, with Emily also participating in the event. The battle is a 3v3, with Max and Emily paired up along with the third kid, as they are to face off against celebrity opposition, which includes the mayor and an actress. Emily, who knows nothing of teamwork, goes on to knock out her own teammates in her pursuit to take out the opposing teams and blades. Max reminds her that they need to work as a team, but she does not listen to reason, instead advises them to let her do all the work. Her arrogance comes back to bite her as she goes on to accidentally knock out Max's blade, which causes her Beyblade to lose its balance, soon leading to her now compromised Beyblade finding itself surrounded by her opponents, which work together to knock her blade out the dish. The third and final round commences, and Emily seeks revenge against the mayor's Beyblade in particular, as it was his tactic the opposing team implored in defeating her in the previous round. She still refuses to work together, and again finds herself with her blade trapped. Max calls upon Drasil to defend Emily's Beyblade, and also manages to help secure them the win. Emily finally starts to understand the importance of teamwork. Michael, the leader of the All-Stars, taunts the Blade Breakers in how much more superior their team is compared to them. Given that the All-Stars have highly advanced Beyblade and science as well as technology backing them, having had improvements made to his Beyblade, Tyson is raring to go. And so the tournament begins, in which Kenny calculates that in order for the Blade Breakers to face off against the PvP All-Stars, both teams must make it to the finals. Kai volunteers to go first, as Emily cited to him how she wishes to figure out what makes him tick, and so he wants to play along and give her the opportunity to capture data on him. Kai takes on his opponent Miguel, whose Beyblade is covered with wires, which allows it to deflect attacks back to its opponent's Beyblade. Unfortunately for Miguel, Kai immediately calls upon Dronza, which absolutely decimates his Beyblade. Kai wins so fast that Emily's computer couldn't even register any data on his blade. Max is up next, going on to face Pedro, whose Beyblade is able to damage Max's blade from the get-go. But Max is able to flip the script using his false strength against him, having his Beyblade deliberately use the spokes on Pedro's blade in order to attach itself to it. Drasil then spins and hurls Pedro's blade into a structure of rocks within the bay dish, winning him the battle. Tyson must take on Jose, and with his newly upgraded Dragoon is able to completely overpower Jose's blade, shocking even Judy and Emily, whom both acknowledge Tyson's strength has dramatically improved since they had last analysed him. The Blade Breakers are able to progress to the next stages of the tournament. They must now take on the Savage Slammers, an unusual group of sorts. Ray is first to go up against Diego, in a bay dish the commentators call the Tsunami Stadium, which houses a bed of water that resembles a lake. Ray initially underestimates his fall believing he had won but Diego was only biding his time by imploring a hide and seek attack. His blade emerges from the bed of water and knocks Ray's Beyblade out of the match. Diego goes on to explain to the Blade Breakers how in the past he was trying to teach his pet iguana to play hide and seek and he ended up finding a Beyblade in the water which it brought to him. This is the same Beyblade that he still uses today. Although he does not have a bit beast of his own, he has created a technique and playstyle in which mimics his reptiles characteristics and traits. Max must take on Fernando. All the pressure is on Max as should he lose, the Blade Breakers will be eliminated from the tournament. Fernando explains how one day his blade fell into the water which a wild seal retrieved for him. Similarly to his teammate before him, he implores the attributes of a seal in his playstyle. Max calls upon his bit beast and just as most seals would, Fernando's natural reaction to imminent danger is to flee so he forfeits the match. The final match is a winner takes all, with Tyson taking on Axel, who explains one day he called off a few kids in which were abusing a tortoise. After saving the tortoise, he asks it grant him a wish in that it present him with a Beyblade, in which it does. Naturally Tyson doesn't believe a word of any of that, but nonetheless, like his teammates, Axel has adapted his Beyblade to represent a tortoise's strongest asset, which is its defensive shell. And so he carries with him a bulky and reinforced Beyblade. Tyson uses the water within the Bay Dish to increase the attack power of Dragoon's special attack, which enables it to create a small hurricane, which kicks Axel's blade out of the dish, which means the Blade Breakers are able to move on to the semi-finals, with the All-Stars also making their way to the semi-finals too. Tyson overindulges at the buffet, 
and winds up contracting a reoccurring bout of vicious bowel movements leading him to become borderline anemic and incapable of battling. Kai steps up to fill in for him but Max and Ray whom battle first defeat their opponents which propels the team straight to the finals. Emily and Judy are watching on and Emily asks Judy if she is at all distracted by the fact that Max is in the competition in which she denies but goes on to clarify that the All-Stars who have also made it to the finals may have more work cut out for them taking on the Blade Breakers in the finals than they initially had thought. The Blade Breakers argue internally as Kenny declines Max's wish to battle in the third match of the finals as he feels their opponents have way too much data on Max being fully aware of his playstyle. Knowing that the All-Stars have little to no data on Kai, Kenny wishes to put him in place to battle in the third match. Max is frustrated by this as he wishes for the opportunity to show off his strength to his mom and the perfect way to do so is to defeat her ace in the third match. Max believes in doing so he will entice his mom who spends most of her time if not all of it doing research and by him winning it would justify her in spending more time with him. Whilst they are both out getting some air Max and his mom have a chat. Judy acknowledges how busy she has been with their research and so reassures Max that he is always on her mind and that she misses spending time with him too. Judy looks out for Max and warns him not to fight in the third match as he will be torn to pieces against Michael. Max informs her that the team have already agreed that he will not participate in the final match. Judy probes as to who they have elected to participate in the third and final match but Max does not disclose this as they are on opposing teams after all. Tyson also joins the conversation and reiterates the same with Kenny and Ray arriving shortly thereafter too. Judy acknowledges her son has some great friends at his side. Once she leaves Max again asks if he can fight in the third match. Kai omits his disinterest to compete anyways but we all know that to be untrue as he loves to battle. This is Kai's way of helping force Kenny's hand in allowing Max to face off against Michael in the final match. And so Kenny does finally buckle and agree to let Max participate in the final battle. Given this is the finals the battles are based on three matches each in which are made up of three rounds. First to secure two wins in a match is the winner. First up is Tyson who takes on Steve and his bit beast Trihorn. Tyson surprisingly is able to secure the first win with relative ease. It turns out Steve deliberately went easy on him per Judy's instruction as it allowed her to capture up to date data on Tyson's Beyblade. The second round commences and Steve completely overpowers Tyson's blade once he calls upon Trihorn knocking Dragoon out of the bay dish. The final round is underway and after a grueling battle Tyson using his sheer will and determination is able to overcome Steve and emerge victorious. Judy is unable to compute as to how Tyson pulled off the win. She soon realises she has failed to factor into her calculations the inner drive of a blader acknowledging the major oversight on her part. Ray must take on Eddie in the second match. They both must battle in a bay dish that is essentially a trampoline. Now Eddie's Beyblade is unique in that it has an extra wide attack ring which is able to hold its position stable in one spot. Eddie easily knocks out Ray's Beyblade with no trouble at all. The second round commences and although Ray fares much better this time unfortunately he is unable to overcome Eddie and loses the match. Now with the teams tied all the pressure is again on Max to deliver for his team. He must face off against Michael strongest of the all-stars. Max feels the pressure and reconsiders battling but Tyson's grandpa and Kai both reassure Max that he's got it in the bag. With his team relying on him Max is ready to step up to the plate. Kenny is having a breakdown as the stats show that Max has no way to beat Michael but the rest of the team are unfazed by this having full confidence in their friend. The first round begins and as expected by most Michael is able to easily beat Max. Although Judy is desperate for her team to win which will validate her data centric method of strategizing for bay battles as well as her job being on the line should the all stars lose she as a mother cannot help but somewhat root for Max even though the odds are stacked against him. Tyson is also rooting for Max and goes on to tell him it doesn't matter if he wins or loses so long as he does his best as he feels Max is putting pressure on himself to secure the win which is preventing him from performing to the best of his ability. The second round begins and both bladers Beyblades clash but Max is able to hold his ground which baffles Michael. Lucille is able to knock Michael's Beyblade out of the dish which means the final round will be a winner take all tiebreaker. Even Kai is impressed by Max. 
The data shows Judy and Emily that Max was able to double his power in the second round. Judy advises Michael to switch to his power pitch for the final round, which is a gloves off full power launch of his Beyblade at maximum velocity. Not only would Max winning the final bout make the Blade Breakers the champions of the US tournament, but will also prove to Judy that the human spirit is a greater weapon than science alone. The battle begins and whilst Max is able to stay in the match, Drasil is being pushed to the edge of the bay dish and unless he does something soon, he will lose. Kai has a solution in mind but does not disclose this to Max as he goes on to tell the team that Max must figure this out for himself. A message which Kenny concurs as he agrees they must put their faith in Max and his abilities. Max reaffirms his belief in himself and calls upon Drasil which shocks the All-Stars. Max's strategy is to continue to make Michael exert all his power. Due to Michael's blade's output, Judy's machines all begin to short circuit. Now with Michael's Beyblade drained, Max is able to knock it out of the bay dish, thus securing the win whilst impressing his mom at the same time. He goes on to tell Max that he has always been her greatest achievement. Max has now finally gotten the validation he has always looked for, whilst also having gained the respect of the All-Stars. Judy's boss, the mayor, confronts her on her team's loss and the methods she implored which he feels proved ineffective. She reiterates the data was collected to perfection, but without factoring human will into the equation, the data proved fruitless. She is motivated to continue with her research, but this time not only assessing the data from a scientific analysis point of view, but also factoring in human emotion. Now, I just wanted to take a few seconds to thank those of you who have made it this far into this video. If you enjoy longer form content like this, then smash the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing to the channel. If there are any other particular videos you would like me to do, you can let me know in the comments section below. The World Championships are soon to commence, which is to be hosted in Russia, and so a ship arrives to take the Blade Breakers to the destination in order to compete. On the ship, Kenny discloses to the team that after he and Dizzy analysed their past battles, they realised that the team is missing their own signature style, which many of the teams they have faced thus far all have. Kenny acknowledges each member has a unique playstyle, but their matches mostly end in them winning by the skin of their teeth, so he and Dizzy feel that each member needs to get stronger through physical training. In order to fix their individual deficiencies which holds them back in battle, such as Tyson's endurance at times and Max's lack of power. Meanwhile on the ship, there is an arrogant blader by the name of Robert, who is going around destroying Beyblades in battle. Tyson challenges Robert which he accepts. Tyson wants to display his prowess from the onset and so calls upon Dragoon to attack, but Robert is unfazed and goes on to easily push Tyson's Beyblade back, but Tyson still manages to remain in the battle. But this is short-lived as Robert calls upon his own bit beast, Grifolian, which is far larger than Dragoon and easily defeats it. Tyson loses the match and whilst his Beyblade is still in one piece, Tyson's confidence is shattered, as he later goes on to disclose to his team how he deliberately withdrew Dragoon from the battle in order to prevent his Beyblade from being destroyed. Kai and the rest of the team provide Tyson the nudge he needs to keep on going, with him vowing to be ready the next time he and Robert face off. The ship's dark in the UK and the team is forced to stay the night in London after being tricked by a mysterious man which leads them to miss their ship which sails off to Russia without them. They book a hotel for the night and a package is dropped off to their room which contains a videotape of Tyson's father, Tatsuya Granger. In the video, his father is taping an update on his research into bit beasts and found that the beasts had in fact interacted with humans for millennia. Mr. Granger highlights how there are some notable bit beasts that have grown and become evil over the many centuries, which shocks the group. They wonder who sent them the tape, and Ray feels the sender is trying to hint to them that they themselves need to do some research into bit beasts. Tyson believes his father has something to do with them being stuck in London, and so he decides to stay in the UK capital for a little bit longer in order to train. They are interrupted by a shadow figure who steals Tyson's Beyblade. The shadowy figure starts to chant, which causes a bit beast to emerge from the blade circling Dragoon. The team deduce that this may be one of those evil bit beasts Mr. Granger had mentioned in his video. And so Ray and Max, without hesitation, launch their blades in order to protect Dragoon as it's being pummeled by the mummified bit beast. Both of their blades' combined forces is not enough, 
and so they call upon Drigger and Drusil, but the mummified Bit Beast ties them both up, with this Dark Master then commanding it to destroy their Bit Beasts. Kai is the only one left who can battle, and he has a plan in mind to defeat this tricky foe. Kai has drawn a maneuver around the stairwells in the alleyway they are in, leading to the enemy's Bit Beast tying itself up, having used its own attack against it. Kai completely incapacitates the evil Bit Beast, saving Dragoon, Drigat, and Drusil. The shadowy man calls on his bit beast and goes on to retreat, but not before citing that his goal is to destroy them. The blade breakers wonder who that figure was and what his motives are. Kenny wants to leave London ASAP, but Tyson cannot help but chuckle as he feels given the strength of their new foe, battling and defeating him will help the team improve, with Ray, Max and even Kai all in agreement with Tyson. The team want to use the extra time they have as a means to level up by defeating these new powerful foes, which includes the shadow figure and Robert too. The kids go on to board a train that will take them to Paris, which oddly has no other passengers in the cart. Having the train to themselves, the team are ecstatic. Little do they know, the train's conductor is none other than the dark figure from earlier. Ray later finds out that in fact the entire train is empty and goes on to inform the rest of his friends. The train suddenly comes to a halt, the team have no choice but to exit it. They are stopped by three more members similar to that of the shadow figure from before. They are all members of a team called the Dark Bladers. Introducing themselves by name, we have Sanguinex, Lupinex and Zom. It turns out they used to be humans but their hunger for power has made them soulless. Tyson agrees to battle Sanguinex under the condition that should he win, they let go of Kenny, who is being held hostage by the previous member of the Dark Bladers, which we have already met, whose name is Zenotaph. However, should Tyson lose, he loses his bit beast. Initially, Sanguinex has the elements of surprise on his side, with the agility of his Beyblade throwing Tyson off kilter, but this does not last for long, as Tyson promises to teach him a lesson and so Dragoon begins to push back the Dark Blader's Beyblade. After witnessing Dragoon's strength, Lupinex launches his blade into battle, but Max is having none of it and has Drusil back up Dragoon. Both he and Tyson call upon their bit beasts, but this plays into their foe's hands, as they too call on theirs, which begin to drain the energy of Dragoon and Drusil. Kenny realises that the bit beasts of their enemies resemble the beasts from the movie they watched earlier on the train. Kenny deduces that bit beasts carry the same weaknesses as their chosen blader. He then realises he must figure out the weaknesses of the two dark bladers his friends are battling against. Sanguinex being a vampire, Kenny deduces he must be weak to light, and so Tyson and Max implore a tactic in which allows their Beyblades to work together and create a stream of light which enables them to take out Sanguinex's blade. Max figures out in Lupinex's case he must be weak to silver as he is a werewolf. Ray then inserts a silver coin into his Beyblade and launches his blade with Drigger now being covered in a veil of silver and he easily defeats Lupinex's bit beast. The Dark Bladers all go on to retreat, vowing to return. The kids are rescued from the tunnel but wonder what they will do the next time they meet the Dark Bladers. Sanguinex's words on how their bit beasts will soon transform into dark beasts continue to bother Tyson. But Kenny reassures him that although their enemies look scary, they are just bladers after all and can evidently be defeated. Kenny goes on to suffer from a nightmare in which the dark bladers are trying to recruit him, explaining that their goal is to possess the blade breakers bit beasts in order to take down the BBA. The kids make it to Paris, not realising that they are being followed by Lupinex. They all search the area to find Kai is nowhere to be seen. Tyson and Kenny see Zom in front of them with Ray and Max rushing to their side having heard their screams. The rest of the Dark Bladers also show up. Kenny worries as they are outnumbered due to Kai still being missing. The kids demand the Dark Bladers explain to them why they are after their bit beasts. Sanguinex explains in the past each member of the Dark Bladers were defeated easily in battle and since have vowed to capture all bit beasts. He expands on how he took on the same Robert that Tyson fought, whom also had easily defeated him too. The Dark Bladers were no match versus the giant bit beasts of Robert and his team. 
the humiliation is too much and the Dark Blade is resolved to attain all the Bit Beasts in the world in order to become powerful enough to exact revenge upon Robert and his team. And Kai, who was off training on his own to test out Dranza's new attack ring, sees the flash of light from afar, realizing the Dark Bladers have returned. Kai makes it in the nick of time and joins in the battle. Now with the odds evened out, the Blade Breakers are able to defeat Sanguinex and his team. Having been humiliated once again, the Dark Bladers retreat. The group are approached by a member of Robert's team, Oliver, who was watching the battle. Whilst Oliver compliments their strengths, he also highlights how the team lacked the ability to control the power of their blades, in particular their bit beasts, which is preventing them from reaching their full potential. Oliver leaves having felt he has already said too much. Kai gets in some more practice by challenging the local alleyway bladers, whilst Kenny and Tyson explore Paris. Ray meets up with his uncle, whom works at a restaurant in the French capital. Tyson wants to tour a museum, but the duo are told they cannot enter as it is being rented out by none other than Oliver. Tyson refuses to take Noel as an answer, so goes on to distract the guard, which enables him to make his way into the museum. Max finds out from a local that Oliver is a famous champion blader. Tyson locates and confronts Oliver, but tensions soon dissolve away when he invites Tyson as well as Kenny over to his restaurant to eat. After lunch, Tyson asks for a bay battle, which Oliver agrees to. The locals catch wind of their battle and so make their way to view it, and so too do Max and Ray. Oliver further makes the point that Tyson and his Bit Beast, although have a strong bond, are just not in sync with one another and lack any rhythm. Tyson calls upon Dragoon to unleash its special move, and so too does Oliver call on his Bit Beast, Unicolian which is so massive that it completely dwarfs Tyson's Bit Beast. Initially, Dragoon and Tyson are both overwhelmed, but with the encouragement of his friends, Tyson is able to stay in the match and even goes on the offensive, ending the battle in a draw. Having gained Oliver's respect, he goes on to disclose there is another European world champion, Enrique, who lives in Italy, that is even stronger than he is. And with that information, the Blade Breakers make their way to Italy. The kids now in Italy reach the gates of Enrique's lavish home. They are interrupted by a brash, arrogant young man. Little do the kids know that this young man is none other than Enrique, who soon finds his cover blown when his butler addresses him by name, advising he is due to study now. Enrique makes a swift retreat as he does not wish to study, but much rather spend his time chasing after girls. Tyson confronts him and refuses to leave until he agrees to a battle, which Enrique eventually does agree to after Tyson insinuates that he is scared to face him. The following morning, the Blade Breakers meet at the location Enrique gave them, which is a replica of a Colosseum. The battle begins and Enrique reveals his Bit Beast, Amphilion, another giant Bit Beast. But having already experienced the giant Bit Beasts of Robert and Oliver, Tyson is unfazed. But Kenny feels something is not quite right as Tyson is holding his own fairly easily. It turns out Kenny was right to be worried as Enrique's blade goes on to duplicate itself and is able to simultaneously attack Dragoon multiple times over, launching one final attack subduing Dragoon. Amphilion then turns its attention to Tyson and launches an attack directly towards him. However, Dragoon protects Tyson but is unable to stand up to the mutant Bit Beast and is soon defeated. Enrique offers Tyson a rematch whenever he is ready. The team study the tape of the battle which Dizzy captured. Amphilion having two heads puts Dragoon at a major disadvantage as it's as though it is battling two Bit Beasts at once. They decide to discuss strategy and tactics over some pizza. Kenny makes some improvements to Dragoon's gear spin ratio which provides it more agility laterally as well as enabling it to follow a non-linear movement pattern. Tyson does not take the rematch lightly and spends all his time leading up to it practicing. As Enrique is out shopping, suddenly his previous match with Tyson comes to the forefront of his mind, which puts him at an ease. He is shocked to see Oliver behind him who has made his way to Italy and they both catch up over lunch. Enrique explains to Oliver how Tyson's attitude bothers him. His teammate concurs and adds that it's not just Tyson who has this attitude but it is shared by the rest of the Blade Breakers in that they never back down even when the odds are stacked against them. The pair bump into Tyson and Kenny and they both agree to commence the rematch now and so make their way to the Colosseum. 
Tyson and Enrique both launched their blades, with Enrique wasting no time in calling out Amphilion and commanding it to attack. But Dragoon with this newfound agility is able to manoeuvre away from danger. Oliver is baffled as to why the battle is still raging on. Enrique begins to lose his cool and so does his bit beast, causing the two of its heads to clash due to the way Dragoon is moving around the base stadium. Amphilion's two heads have become so enraged that they begin to rebel against Enrique's commands and go on to attack him. To all the boasting Oliver made on earlier episodes on how under control he and his team's bit beasts are, this is quite the turn of events. Tyson commands Dragoon to protect Enrique whilst Tyson himself makes his way over to Enrique. Amphilion has clamped itself to Dragoon, so Tyson tells Dragoon to take to the sky, using the pull of gravity to cause Amphilion to loosen its grip on his bit beast. Dragoon then launches its final attack, winning Tyson the rematch. Tyson and company gain the respect of both Oliver and Enrique, go on to tell him how Robert is the strongest of all the European champions, having never lost a battle. The duo drive the blade breakers to Robert's castle as Tyson wishes to avenge his loss. Having reached the castle, the crew find Robert playing chess with another European champion by the name of Johnny. Tyson demands a rematch in which Robert refuses as he believes once an opponent has been defeated, the battle is definitively over, and goes on to provide background into the history of his gladiator ancestors who passed down the castle to him, as well as his bit beast, Grifolion. Johnny, however, is down to battle and calls out Kai. He introduces the team to his bit beast, Salamulion, and the battle commences, which is quite evenly matched to begin with. Kai calls upon Dronza, and so too does Johnny call out his bit beast temperature in the room begins to rise, with Dizzy highlighting how both bit beasts having the same fiery attributes is what's causing the rise in temperature. Salamulian easily finishes off Dronza much to everybody's shock. Robert questions Johnny as to why he so unnecessarily exerted so much of his power in his match versus Kai. Kai on the other hand, having lost, is seething mad at himself, with the blade breakers all vowing to become much stronger. They all refuse to leave the castle unless Robert gives Tyson a rematch. Robert eventually agrees to a rematch which will also provide him the opportunity to test out his newly built base stadium, but he sets the conditions that the battle will take place under the following rule set, that three members of each team will participate in a one-on-one -on -one match, with the first team to win two matches out of three will be crowned the victor. He also adds that should the Blade Breakers lose, they must withdraw from participating in the World Championships. The Blade Breakers all train together leading up to their match. The official BBA announcer DJ has been hired to call the match, and the stadium is also filled with Beyblading fans. Kenny finds himself somewhat held hostage in the audience stands by none other than the Dark Bladers whom are also spectating the match in the hopes Robert's team called the Majestics are defeated. First up is Ray who takes on Oliver. Ray is not holding back in this match, having had a history of not delivering in tournament battles, he finally redeems himself and Drigge is able to push back Unicolian, but the battle inevitably ends in a draw. Oliver warns Johnny who's up next to battle that he must not take his match lightly. Kai steps up ready to avenge his loss. In the stands, the Dark Bladers begin to lose their cool by the mere sight of the Majestics. The match soon commences between Johnny and Kai, whom both waste no time in calling out their bit beasts. Kai implores a technique in which creates a protective veil around Dronza, which allows it to stand up to Salamulion's attack, but Dronza soon finds itself thrashed about by the mutant bit beast. Tyson yells out to Kai to recall how he defeated Enrique. Kai commands Dronza to fly. Oliver and Enrique warn Johnny to stay on guard, but he refuses to heed their warning. Unlike Kai, who although reluctant too, takes on board the advice of his teammate, which allows Dronza to break free of the giant salamander's grasp, hurling it out of the bay dish, winning Kai the match. Over at the stands, Sanguinex concludes there is good in Tyson and decides that they must protect Tyson, which is a positive for the Blade Breakers as they now have one less enemy to worry about. The final match begins and Tyson is able to finally have his much awaited rematch with Robert. The battle begins and just as their teammates before them, they both call out their bit beasts. 
Robert implores the same long distance attack used to defeat Dragoon in their first match, but Tyson is able to counter it this time by having Dragoon close the distance. Robert has an answer to this and has his bit piece pin Dragoon. He goes on to taunt Tyson in how his friends can no longer help him now, but Tyson does not give up as he has full trust and faith in Dragoon, shocking Robert when Dragoon is able to unpin itself. Kenny now feeling more at ease amongst the Dark Bladers answers their question as to whether Tyson is crazy or just reckless. Kenny concurs he is a bit of both but their power mostly comes from the bond between them and their bit beasts which they all respect and care for. Dragoon and Grafolian clash one final time and Tyson comes out victorious. Robert finally understands the value of trust, respect and teamwork. The Dark Bladers still wish to avenge their loss against the Majestics, but Tyson asks that the Dark Bladers stop, which they do, as Sanguinex highlights how lucky Robert and Cole are that they have now taken a liking to Tyson. The Blade Breakers are now ready to make their way to the World Championships. Mr. Dickinson reveals himself as the man who caused the crew to initially miss the ship. He did this so they could meet and experience different types of powerful Bladers out there in Europe. They arrive in Moscow and happen upon a strange fellow by the name of Boris, whom claims to be the head of a bay blading training centre as well as chairman of the tournament. He invites them to join him for lunch. Kai soon realises that the training centre belongs to the Demolition Boys, a powerful team whom the rest of the Blade Breakers will soon meet. Boris's training facility operates similar to that of an academy where his students spend their days training as his goal is to prepare them to become the leaders of the next generation of bladers. Tyson doesn't agree with his methods of training his students over long periods of hours each day as he feels it will kill the fun that they have in playing the game. Boris is surprised by this and offers for Tyson to challenge one of his student bladers to prove that his methods are ineffective. His students are hesitant to take on Tyson and so Boris handpicks one of them by the name of Alexander. Kai having taken a direct look at Boris's face recognises him from his past. The battle begins between Tyson and Alexander with his opponent initially having the upper hand but Tyson is eventually able to prevail and secure the win. Boris shows his true colours and crushes Alexander's Beyblade ruthlessly using his foot going on to kick him out of the training facility. This naturally does not sit well with the Blade Breakers, but they are surrounded by hostile Bladers and so have no choice but to leave. Kai promises to return to the facility in order to figure out what his history is with the place as we too are yet to find out what his relationship with Boris was. Much to Max's delight, Judy arrives in Russia with the All-Stars, having been specially invited by Voltaire to participate in the tournament and so too do the White Tigers arrive in Moscow having received the same invite. Whilst all the different teams bond, Kai infiltrates the training facility in order to get to the bottom of his link to the building and Boris. The White Tigers and All-Stars battle one another in a friendly yet competitive showdown in which each member shows off their skills. They soon all realise that Kai is missing, deducing that he has made his way back to that training facility. Having bumped into Boris, who confirms that in fact Kai was one of his students, Boris begins to coax Kai into returning and becoming the leader of his bladers. He laments how the BioVault Corporation have a much higher purpose in teaching their bladers to dominate. Boris tries to appeal to Kai's competitive drive and attempts to entice him by stating Kai will be given infinite resources at his disposal that will allow him to gain more power. Kai rejects the offer and so his old master asks what it is he seeks then. Kai simply responds by laughing off Boris's attempts to lure him back into the fold. The sun has set and the kids have returned to their hotel room but Kai is still AWOL. The kids are worried for Kai's safety and so go out to look for him. As Kai attempts to escape, Boris uses the security weapons at the facility to prevent him from leaving as well as using it as an opportunity to test his old apprentice at the same time. The rest of the gang make their way to the facility but Boris prevents them from entering, sending two members of the Demolition Boys, Ian and Tala, to stop them. Tyson and Ian begin to bay battle, whilst Kai is beginning to become frustrated with the barriers being presented before him. 
Boris directs Kai to a room which he cites will provide him the answers he seeks. Within the dark room is a dark Beyblade, similar in design to Kai's own, but this Beyblade holds a bit beast referred to as Black Dronza. You see, Black Dronza is an engineered bit beast, having been created at the laboratory within the facility. At a young age, Kai could not stop thinking about Black Dronza, but due to his inexperience, he was not permitted to use the blade, nor for the matter was anyone else at the facility allowed to either. However, the young Kai sneaks into the room holding the Beyblade containing the dark bit beast. Upon launching the blade, he almost destroys the facility. This event traumatized Kai, which Boris cites is what caused him to block out his memory linked to the facility. Having been impressed by Kai's strength, Boris offers for him to have Black Dronza, which is by a large margin the most powerful bit beast in the world. But he can only have it under the condition that he joins Biovolt. Kai has always longed to be the most powerful blader, which he will in fact become with Black Dronza at his disposal, and so he agrees to the terms. Having had word that Kai is no longer an issue, Ian and Tala withdraw before the battle with Tyson can conclude. Tala cites Kai is unwell and is being tended to at the facility, going on to promise that he will take them to Kai once he has recovered. Boris reports to Voltaire that Kai has joined the fold. This time around, Kai is able to control Black Dronza and concludes that he has always been destined to battle alone. Denouncing his position within the Blade Breakers, Tyson now back at the hotel continues to worry about Kai. The following morning, the Blade Breakers hop on a bus ready to make their way to the World Championship. The All-Stars are the first to battle, having to face off against the Demolition Boys. The All-Stars are confident, but when the first match begins between Ian and Steve, they soon realize how much they have underestimated their foe. Even Judy and Emily are having trouble gathering any data on Ian's blade, deducing a firewall must be in place preventing their computers from getting any data on their opponent's blades. Ian easily defeats Steve. Eddie steps up to take on Tala, the leader of the Demolition Boys, who goes on to literally one-shot Eddie's Beyblade. Judy is unable to make sense of what she is seeing, whilst the Blade Breakers are majorly impressed by Tala and his team's power. Michael is the last one standing, taking on none other than Kai, much to everybody's shock. The betrayal completely blindsides the Blade Breakers. Michael talks his usual schmack, but Kai unnerves him with his response, in that he will take on their entire team at once. The battle begins, in which all members of the All-Stars take on Kai. Using Black Dronza alone, he completely decimates each of their Beyblades without even breaking a sweat. In an odd turn of events, Kai confiscates the All-Stars Bit Beasts, having Black Dronza assimilate them into its blade. Kai announces that they are undeserving of the Bit Beast's power, and as the wielder of the most powerful one, he proclaims by right he is their sole guardian. Tyson asks Kai to explain himself, but he is shunned by his old teammate. Mariah is furious for what the Demolition Boys did to her new friends and wants to teach them a lesson, but the rest of the White Tigers are worried that they too will wind up losing their bit beasts. Lee agrees with Mariah that they need to teach Kai a lesson, and so the White Tigers are prepared to take on the Demolition Boys, knowing full well that their bit beasts are on the line. Back in the locker room, Kai is not behaving as himself. It's clear to see the negative influence that Black Dronza is having on him. Kai faces Gary, who wastes no time in calling out his Bit Beasts. Kai is able to harness the power of the Bit Beasts he has already captured from the All Stars and so calls upon Trihorn, commanding it to launch its special attack. He then uses Black Dronza to finish off and capture Gary's Bit Beast. Kai goes on to destroy Mirai's Beyblade, and so too does he steal her Bit Beast. Lee's furious, stepping up to teach him a lesson. He fares better than his teammates, but is ultimately no match for Black Dranza and he too is defeated. Kai has now captured three of the White Tiger's bit beasts. Kai's old team make their way to Boris's facility in order to speak with Kai, but he does not wish to see them, having become completely obsessed with his new bit beast's power. Tyson and the rest of the team force their way into the building with Tyson stumbling upon a room in which it's made clear Bit Beasts are being artificially created. Boris informs Tyson of his history with Kai and BioVault's ultimate goal in reshaping the world as they see fit, by using the power of the strongest blader and Bit Beast, which is Kai and Black Dronza. 
Kai arrives and throws Granza to the floor, denouncing it, citing he no longer has any use for it. Tyson is shocked to see how cold Kai has become. His old teammate leaves, vowing to take on Tyson at the championship who is left visibly upset and informs the rest of the team that it's over, confirming this by showing them Dranza whose blade he now holds. Whilst the blade breakers are having breakfast, Max is at the airport seeing his mum off. Before her flight arrives, they have a chat and Judy thinks she can help Max and his team against the demolition boys as she has data on them that she will analyse once she gets home. Judy promises to share any insights she has with Max. At their hotel, the kids are met by a man in a suit who advises Kai is invited for them to meet with him. They are for the most part in good spirits, thinking Kai is ready to come back, but Ray isn't sold on this. They are taken by a helicopter to a remote location in Siberia, covered by ice. Kai is waiting for them. He has called to meet them as he wishes to battle them. Tyson accepts the challenge and so too do Ray and Kenny. The trio agree to battle Kai in order to honour their team, whom up to this point Kai has done nothing but slander. Before Judy leaves, she gives Max a present which is a new Beyblade in which improves Drasil's power and exponentially increases its defence. Emily shows Max a satellite photo of his friends at the remote location. Max is desperate to go help them and so Judy agrees to use the private plane set to pick her up to take him to the location. Kenny's Beyblade is easily knocked out the match. Ray calls out Drigga and Kai calls upon the numerous bit beast he has stolen. Taking Ray out of the match too, Tyson is the last blader standing but he too is soon defeated. Just as Kai is about to steal Dragoon and Drigga, Max parachutes down just in the nick of time and launches Drasil at Black Bronzer. Much to Kai's amusement which doesn't last long as soon as he finds himself shocked at Drusil's defensive capabilities which enables it to hold its ground against Black Bronza. In retaliation Kai calls upon all the bit beasts he has captured to attack Drusil in unison. But he's still not able to make a dent in Drusil's impenetrable defence. He then calls upon Black Dronza to attack Drusil head on and is shocked to see that he is still unable to break Drusil's defence. Max calls on Tyson to make his move. With Dragoon out for the count, Tyson realises he still has Dronza on hand and so launches it into battle. Kai is furious Tyson has brought Dronza with him and Tyson commands Dronza to attack, shocking Kai who is surprised at how powerful Dronza is. Tyson laments how it has always been this powerful but Kai has done nothing but underestimate it. Whilst the rest of the Blade Breakers add just as he has always underestimated them too. All of the Blade Breakers, Bit Beast, Dragoon, Dronza, Drigger, and Drasil collectively attack the Dark Phoenix, finally defeating it. The ice breaks away, and in complete shock, Kai allows himself to begin being submerged by the icy cold water. As he cites to himself how he is just a loser, whilst finally acknowledging the Blade Breakers' strength. Tyson and the rest of the team desperately try to save their old teammate and plead with him to take Tyson's hand. Kai finally apologises and reaches for Tyson's hand with the rest of the team mustering all their strength to pull him out. They ask him to join the team once again and Tyson returns Dronza to Kai. He agrees to return but wants to make things right first and so flies back to the facility in order to meet with his old mentor one final time. Kai returns to the research facility to hand over Black Dronza to Boris but not before launching it within the facility destroying their computers. Voltaire is furious at Boris who goes on to advise his boss that they are still on schedule with the power hungry old man making it clear that this will be the one and only time he will let Boris's mistake slide. Boris has the demolition boys destroy the Black Dronza Beyblade in order to assimilate the captured bit beast within it. The Blade Breakers toast to Kai's return and are all in great spirits. Kenny highlights how Kai switching teams was actually one of the best things to happen for the Blade Breakers as now he has returned on his own volition solidifying his loyalty to the team. Kai explains to his friends what BioVault's ultimate goal is in that they aspire to create an army of Beybladers whom will go on to act as soldiers having them use their artificially created bit beast to take over the world. Mr Dickinson arrives and reveals how he was aware of BioVault's plan from the beginning which was the reason he had curated the Blade Breakers in order to face off against the Demolition Boys in the World Championships. Tyson's dad arrives and explains how Mr Dickinson had contacted him to do research on Bit Beasts. 
Mr. Granger provides his insight to the group around how there are still many ancient bit beasts yet to be awoken. He goes on to cite how he was approached by none other than Boris himself, who informs Mr. Granger that his researchers have figured out a way to create copies of bit beasts, but to do so requires samples of the original counterparts. Tyson's dad was then called by the local police whom have been investigating Boris for quite some time and confirms that he is the head of a secret criminal organisation created by Voltaire. Tyson's dad goes on to contact Mr Dickinson to inform him of this, but Mr Dickinson who was already aware of their plans advises him that the BBA were already investigating Voltaire for quite some time now and they have deduced that his plan is to take over the world by having an army of man-made bit beasts at his command via the bladers. The videotapes sent to the kids in Europe of Tyson's dad was also Mr Dickinson's doing. Tyson is still not seeing how Kai is connected to all this, until that is he is shocked to hear that Kai is Voltaire's grandson. The bond between the Blade Breakers is as strong as ever and they are all ready to take down Biovolt by defeating the Demolition Boys and winning the World Championship. The group's boss is attacked by Boris's chopper. The Demolition Boys reveal themselves with Ian at the ready to launch his Beyblade towards the kids. Tyson steps forward but is stopped by Kenny who reminds him that his Beyblade is still damaged from its battle with Black Bronzer. Ian goes on ahead anyways and launches his Beyblade towards a defenseless Tyson but so too does Max who launches Drasil in order to protect his friends. Max is able to easily defeat Ian but the Demolition Boys play dirty and Spencer launches his blade towards Drasil. It's clear that their plan is to draw out Max's bit beast in order to capture it. A plan which they are successful in executing as Max does in fact call out Drasil and so too does Spencer call out his bit beast Seaborg. Seaborg's special attack is able to neutralize Drasil's defense thus allowing Spencer to defeat and capture it. Boris whom is also there taunts the Blade Breakers going on to cite how he will capture the rest of their bit beasts at the tournament. Max is distraught and vows to get Seal back. They are all stranded due to the damage their boss had sustained from earlier. Tyson carries a hurt Max on his back. They are all surprised to find another bus arrive to pick them up in which from it emerges none other than Enrique and Oliver but Robert and Johnny are nowhere to be seen. Whilst on the bus Kenny asks where the other two bladers are but Enrique swerves the question by changing the subject. The vehicle stops with the butler who is driving it alleging there is a problem with the engine which will take some time to fix. There's an old building resembling a castle in which the group decide to explore. They are surprised to see Robert emerge from it. Robert alleges that he is there to defeat the Blade Breakers and so too are the rest of the Majestics in which Johnny is also present. The Majestics inform the Blade Breakers that they are there to provide them a tune-up fight in preparation to take on the Demolition Boys. Tyson and Robert battle and it's clear that Robert is simply toying with his old rival which leads to Ray to consider stepping in but he is stopped by none other than Mr Dickinson. Unfortunately Dragoon is defeated making it clear that at their current level the team stand no chance against the Demolition Boys. Robert demands Tyson to launch his blade once more advising him that he needs more than just anger to win this battle. Tyson is just seeing red and is not receptive to what Robert is telling him which results in Dragoon taking a beating. Max talks some sense into Tyson reminding him how he channeled his anger during his rematch against Robert in which he and Dragoon worked as one to overcome Grafolian. Tyson snaps out of his rage and spurs Dragoon on boosting its attack power allowing it to once again overcome Robert's bit beast. The Majestics finally reveal that it was in fact Mr Dickinson who called upon them to help train the team and they go on to acknowledge that the Blade Breakers are the only ones that can defeat the Demolition Boys. Tyson thanks Robert for his help and Kai reiterates to the team that not only does Tyson have the power to defeat the Demolition Boys but so too do the rest of them. The finals begin and Kai wants to be up first as he has pre-existing knowledge of their adversaries. He takes on Spencer. In the first round Dronza is overwhelmed by Spencer's massive bit beast. Seaborg uses the water present within the bay dish to its advantage defeating Kai's Phoenix. It turns out Seaborg is actually one of those ancient bit beasts that Biovolt had discovered and went on to further augment its power raising its strength by a thousand x. Before the second round commences Voltaire tries to entice Kai by offering to return Black Bronzer to him given that the Black Phoenix could easily defeat Seaborg but there is a string attached to the steel as in return 
Kai must capture his friend's bit beast. He seemingly accepts and so the second round commences, but it is Dranza he chooses to call upon instead of its dark counterpart. Accepting the fact that he will be at a major disadvantage, but this does not bother Kai as he still has his teammates spurring him on. Dranza battles valiantly and its potential is on full display once again, but unfortunately the current power gap between the two bit beasts is too much to overcome and Kai is defeated. With Spencer going on to capture Dranza, Kai is still proud of himself and trusts that his friends will succeed in defeating the Demolition Boys and retrieve Dranza as well as the rest of the bit beasts that the Demolition Boys have stolen. Ray's up next. Ray must face off against Brian and his bit beast, Falborg. Ray knows full well that he absolutely cannot lose this match as it will mean the end of the BBA, their bit beasts, and the world as they know it. Brian plays dirty, not only attacking Drigger but Ray too. Although having lost the first round, Ray's will remains strong. With he and Drigger rising to the occasion, they absolutely refuse to back down. Even with the damage they both have sustained, they are able to secure the win in the second round. The final battle is a tiebreaker, but with the injuries he has sustained so far, Ray collapses. Mr. Dickinson and Max do not wish for Ray to continue, but he will not back down. Both Tyson and Kai go on to tell Ray that they believe in him. The third and final round commences. Brian continues to attack Ray directly, leading to Lee to scream out from the bleachers that Ray needed to continue, as his safety is what's most important. Drigger begins to shield Ray from attack. He commands Drigger to launch one final definitive attack, which quite literally destroys Brian's blade. The Blade Breakers claim the second match. All of his friends celebrate, but unfortunately Ray again collapses and the medics take him away. Tyson shares the news with Ray in how he defeated Brian, with Kai going on to inform him how Drigger protected him, but due to the damage it had sustained in the battle, Drigger has disappeared, now having seemingly lost Drigger once again. Ray is at peace knowing one day it shall return and thanks his old partner for saving his life. Ray goes on to plead with Tyson to win the final match for them all. Voltaire berates Boris for Brian having lost. He threatens to pull the funding for Boris's research, but Boris goes on to show Voltaire an incubated Tala in which they are genetically modifying in order to create the most complete and perfect blader. Both Max's parents arrive in Moscow and Judy who has been researching into the Demolition Boys finds evidence that they are clearly cheating using advanced technology to make them essentially unbeatable. Emily is also there and presents Kenny with a CD which contains data they have compiled on Dragoon. The reason Max's dad has arrived is to build a special Beyblade for Dragoon in the exact specifications that Judy's supercomputers have rendered. Tyson and Kai are still outside training with Kai commending Tyson's slick moves. Robert, Lee and Michael also join in to help him train. Tyson asks to take all four of his friends on at once. The results of the battle are not shown, nor important for that matter, as what's made clear here is that the Blade Breakers and all the friends that they have made over the course of the series are working together around the clock in order to give Tyson the best chance to win his battle against the now cybernetic Tala. The first round begins and Tyson launches his newly upgraded Super Dragoon. The upgrades made to Tala's body enable him to predict the exact flow of the match using his now augmented brain's computational abilities which is now akin to that of a supercomputer. He even goes on to call upon Drasil to attack Dragoon. Tala taunts begin to push Tyson's buttons, but Kai and the rest of his friends reassure him that no matter which of their bit beasts that Tala uses against him, Tyson knows best how to handle them. Dragoon moves forward with vigor, taking on the combined might of Drasil and Dranza, going on to emerge victorious. In order for the Demolition Boys to remain in the fight, Tala must win the second round. Tala goes on to cite how he lost the first round on purpose as a means to capture more intel which he can exploit in the following two rounds. The second round commences and Tala reveals his true bit beast, Wahlberg. The White Wolf releases an overwhelming blizzard that not only encompasses the Baydish but the entire arena. The power of Tala's bit beast leads to them both being trapped inside an iceberg. Tyson cannot see nor hear anything on the outside but the audience and his friends are able to see what's going on via the monitors. Tala confirms that they have both been warped into a new dimension to see out their battle to its conclusion. The sheer cold begins to wear on Tyson 
which starts to drain his blade's power. Tala commands all his bit beasts he has captured to launch a collective attack on Dragoon, freezing it. Tala having won the second round upsets many of Tyson's friends, with some starting to lose hope, whilst others refuse to believe Tyson will lose. In the tournament finals, the Bladers up to this point have been given 30 minutes to recuperate between rounds, but Tala does not allow Tyson this time and gets ready to launch his blade into what will be the final round that will determine the fate of the Beyblading world. Tyson smirks and launches Dragoon but not before sighting he knows he cannot win. This confuses Tala. Judy goes over a contingency strategy on the outside, whereby the remainder members of the White Tigers, All Stars and Majestics, whom still have their bit beasts, will need to be ready to step up should Tyson be defeated. Robert understands where she's coming from, but he has full faith in his friend's abilities and asks Judy not to write Tyson off quite yet. Tyson tells Tala how even though his bit beast is exponentially more powerful than his own, he can still win, as the source of Tyson's power is his love for the game. Everyone including the crowd root for Tyson, Dark Bladers even return once more to cheer him on too. Tala becomes enraged by Tyson's resilience and commands Wahlberg to unveil its ultimate attack, whereby it assimilates all the captured bit beasts, transforming itself into a supernova launching a blistering attack towards Tyson. Voltaire is too soon to celebrate as Tyson is in fact safe and sound as Dragoon protected him. In an unexpected turn of events, Dragoon emerges once again from its Beyblade and for the first time speaks directly to Tyson. I have returned because you have never given up hope. You can talk or am I just imagining this? As long as you maintain your belief in me, Tyson, I shall never abandon you. Wicked. Having promised to never abandon Tyson, Dragoon launches its final attack. Even though it's being hurt by blasts being propelled its way from Tala's supernova, Tyson's bit beast refuses to back down, with Kai commenting how Tala is not just taking on Tyson but the spirit of every one of his friends. Kai also cites how simply being the strongest blader is not enough to overcome their combined might. Tala launches all his captured bit beasts in the direction of Dragoon which takes them all on, going on to enter itself into the supernova where both Beyblades clash. The iceberg begins to dissipate which means the match has reached its ultimate conclusion. All that's left to see is which blade is still spinning. As the spirits of all the stolen bit beasts begin to return to their partner's blade, it's made clear Tyson has prevailed in defeating Tala and so the blade breakers win the tournament finally putting a stop to Boris and Voltaire as well as cementing themselves as the current best Beyblading team in the world with Tyson as their champion. Tyson shows Tala respect and thanks him for the battle. Tala accepts the gesture and with the evidence they have mounted against Voltaire, Mr Dickinson advises Voltaire that his plans for global domination is over. Now having been crowned the world champion, all of Tyson's friends want a friendly piece of him. The episode ends with all the bladers letting their Beyblades rip. That ladies and gentlemen concludes the first season of Beyblade. As a whole, honestly, I do not have much criticisms to make towards the show, as overall it was well done. I really like how they didn't really leave any loose ends, everything seemed to tie up nicely in the end. Let's be honest here, Voltaire and Boris are not the most nuanced of villains are they? Compared to Voltaire, Boris is far more interesting in my opinion, and this is not the last we see of him, that's for sure. My biggest contention with the show was initially how little it focused on Max and Ray, especially in the latter parts of this season, but the episodes in which Max was able to save everyone against the seemingly invincible Black Dranza, as well as Ray being able to overcome Brian made up for this in spades. Those are two of my favourite episodes out of this season. Whilst in most cases by and large I prefer the art style of the latter series compared to the first, there's something special about the art direction of the first series. The art style of the first season has some intangibles that make me appreciate it more as I get older and find myself re-watching the show. The highs this season reaches are stellar. I think a major element that lends to this is that the Blade Breakers are always the underdogs against most foes they face, whereas in the latter series they are the champions, becoming well known across the globe as the best team, with Tyson at the helm who is widely regarded by many as the strongest blader in the world. The next two series V-Force and G-Revolutions are excellent in their own right and I honestly do prefer them, but this first series definitely holds a special place in my heart.
Minus the change in art direction, all the same voice actors and music returns in the next two seasons. On the point regarding the music, it's excellently done in this show and definitely adds so much more hype to the battles. I still have many of the Beyblades that were purchased for me in the early to mid 2000s, many of which I will take to school to battle it out with my friends over the surface of the classroom table. I'm interested to know just how many of you had collected Beyblades as a kid too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, a way to let me know is by smashing the like button and also please consider subscribing to the channel so that we can continue to grow this small community of anime fans. More importantly, I would love to hear your thoughts on the series in the comments below, which includes things you liked and any criticisms that you have of the show or felt that they could have done better. On that note, that's it for this one. Till the next time, this is Ray signing off. Peace.